There's a couple of different ways of applying foam. What are they? You can roll it. All right. Which one, which one do we normally try to do the, the most? Roll it. Bank. Especially on a pit fire, you want to bank it. Trying, trying to roll it on, on this, you're going to be a little bit harder to do that, so bank it. The least effective is raining it down. And there could be a spot up here where you have to kind of roll it into the top of the tank, but try not to rain it down because you'll just go completely over the tank. All right, so we can make foam with this, right? What, what, how do I have to make foam with this? How, what, what's got to be set on? All right, 95 or whatever matches my conductor, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so there's some pitfalls that you need to look for. All right, how many gallons per minute is this inductor? 95. Okay, I'm going to give it to you, and you read it, and you tell me how many how, how, how many it is. 25. 25, right? So that's in that blue box. So the guy who's going to be setting up that day, what do you need to confirm? Okay, you need to be able to read it to figure out what you're sitting there applying. So when the IC sits there and he tells you, I want you to sit there and apply 95 gallons per minute at 1% training foam. Because the IC's got to be able to spew that information out. It's your job to go there, pick that up, make sure you bring it, and you sit there and confirm that that's 95 gallons per minute. And you're going to sit there and tell the guy on the, the nozzle 95 gallons per minute. Okay? So then it's got to be set 95 here. And there's only two methods for this. It's either all the way open or all the way shut, right? Because I got to flow how much? 95 gallons per minute, right? The other things that you'll have pitfalls with is you'll get kinks. If you have kinks in your hose, it stops my 95 gallons per minute flow, right? So I got to make sure I have my kinks all out. What's the expansion ratio for this? Does anybody know? It's really about five to one. So I'm going to take five in, I'm going to get about uh, one in, and I'm going to get five out. So for every gallon, I'm going to get about five gallons of foam, or every gallon of solution, okay? The problem with this one is what are we using? We're using 1% training foam. It's designed to break down quick. It won't keep a blanket. On this particular prop, you're going to have to go out over the top of the pit. So getting a good foam blanket, this is not the best option for this. Granted, it has a good thing because if you're using a bypass inductor, I can do water, I can sit there and do foam. So in a plant issue with 3% you know, foam, 6% foam, it's a great tool to sit there and make foam. In this particular application, you're going to probably want something that's going to expand it a whole lot more. So we have that. That's the JS10. It's going to take my one gallon of solution and give me about 20 gallons of foam. So it's going to be a good sized blanket. Since I've got guys that are going to have to walk out on top of that pit, I want a good blanket. This is the one that you want to use for this particular prop. Now I've told people this a lot of times and they'll come back and they'll use this. And guess what happens? They fight and 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 hopefully it just burns the fuel off. All right? So on this particular one, you're going to use this one today to get an idea on it. So when I'm flowing it, it's either all the way shut, right? Now can I hold this particular one like this? That's right. This is an air inductor. So I don't need this close to my jacket. I don't need to have my hands over it. I need to be out away from my body all the way open, right? Okay. On the front of this, what is that thing? It's a deflector plate. So if I got it open, I can sit in there and get about 20, 15 foot. If I push the deflector plate out, it just spews out and kind of drops, which is cool for a pit fire. But if I want to sit there and the top of those pipes up there, I'm going to have to have the deflector plate down. Before I make motion across that yellow line, what do I want to have on the end of this tip? Finished foam. So you want to open it all the way up, good communication, till I get finished foam, and then I can sit there and I can tell the IC I've got finished foam and I'm ready to go. Okay? So the inductors, we've got multiple ones here. All right, 95 gallons per minute. 
I broke it. All right. You want to know how to put it back together? If you, if, it's, if you go out there and you find this in the blue box, you want to know how to put it back together. It's kind of like an air fit. Comes off, puts it back on. It's made it easy to clean it. What's the red button for? I push the red button. Water comes out this thing. All right. What happens if it's in my foam bucket when I push the red button? It's going to overflow, right? And I'm going to kind of dilute it a little bit more. So we don't want to do that. But that's the way you sit there and you uh, clean it. You take it out the bucket, push the button, it back flows water out of it, and then I don't have to sit there and, and do a whole lot of cleaning. All right. So if I'm sitting here doing with this one, oh, what is this called? Bypassing inductor, right? It's got a little switch, a little valve there. When it's in line, I've got nothing but water. When I turn it towards this, I've got foam, right? as long as this is stuck in the bucket. All right, how do I sit there and clean this? That little piece of pipe on the side of that pole, you drop it in it, you turn the water on, and I suck water through it. And that's how I clean it. If you don't clean these things, they're gonna jam up, gum up, and then when you have a fire at your plant, they're not gonna work properly, okay? So I've also got to set this one. I got to make sure that I got what? 1%, right? I want to sit there and communicate that. Normally the 1%, is wherever the pipe's pointed out. You can just sit there and line that up. There's no telling what you're going to get that day. And you're not going to be able to play every position here. So make sure you take the time to learn all the little tools. When you grab something, don't consider it to be 95. Because it could be 25 and there's a 60 in there as well. So you want to sit there and look at that. There's also a JS6. A JS6 is 60 gallons a minute not 95 gallons per minute. Most of them are going off the plant, uh, off the uh, sites. I haven't seen them in here in a while. But we've had two of these before, and one of them a six and one of them a 10. You guys got any questions on this? That I kind of show a little bit more light on it. How do you set the percentage on the TS-40? Remember that it goes with back with that hose, that little dot right there? You just twist the top of it. And you can go down to a half percent, quarter percent, but we're using what? One percent. One percent training fund. All right. Any questions on that? Can we flow water through the JS-10? Yeah. The, the, this right here will not do anything as far as fire protection. It just floods water out and it's not worth anything. So when I've got this, it's got to be married to a combination nozzle because I can't protect myself. So anytime when you're using this, it needs to be side of a combination nozzle that can sit there and be married to. You'll put out a whole lot more fire than he will, but unless he controls his stream and doesn't break your foam blanket, you can, sit there and, you can actually sit there and cause fire to build on top of you. So it's kind of a thing you'll, you'll kind of learn together. All right. So who's going to be my incident commander? Do I got any volunteers? All right, come on, stand on up here. You're going to be my, you're going to be my man. All right. So in this particular prop, what we're going to use, we're going to use three lines. And we've got a lot of people here, so we probably have a lot of backup people. So when you're sitting there giving your orders, you've got to ask five of the questions. What are those five questions? Everybody Is everybody accounted for? Rescue is always number one. What's the fire? What's burning, right? Isolation Is there any remote isolation valves, right? And a lot of times you guys work in the refineries, you already know there is. Or they're not frozen, they're froze up one or the other. All right? Yeah, how, how, if there's enough light, and one more. There we go, wind direction, right? So you got to ask those five questions, and everybody needs to remember those five questions and practice them. So when I'm giving my orders, on test day, they're going to, everybody's going to sit there and have what you're doing. They're going to tell it, you're going to be the nozzle man on number one. That's what you're going to get graded on. You're going to be the kinker. You're going to be this. So what you got to do on test day, who's on line one? All the guys on line one, raise your hand. Okay? He's going to sit there and tell you, I want you to take 150 foot of the inch and a half. I want you to lay out the combination nozzle, 125 gallons per minute. And then you got it, right? If you sit there and give your orders here, I want you to block this, this, and that. They're not freelancing anymore. And you're not back here going. 
give him a standing order so he knows what to do. When I give my monitors, two guys, who, who, who's on the monitors? They raise their hand. You're on the stationary monitor. I want you to sit there and cool. So now he's got his standing orders. So you know how to tell him, to, you know, you wait for my mark. If you want to sit there and get real fancy, when they start flowing foam, I want you to shut it off. Because when we start flowing foam, it's going to break the pattern, right? If you don't have enough people, then you can sit there and give them another standing order. As soon as you guys shut down, I want you to go get two, two fire extinguishers. So that's what you got to remember. My foam line, I want you to sit there and go 150 foot of, of a two, uh, inch and a half. And I want you to sit there and use a JS-10 at a inductor at set 95 gallons per minute. 1% training foam. And then they've got their orders. Now when you step across that, it's everybody's responsibility to remember your orders. Go and get on it. All right. The guy who's sitting there doing the, the nozzle, take the lead. Tell your other guys how to set up, pra practice it. Because we're doing the practicing every time now. All right? So it's good teamwork and it's just good communications. When we go out there, we know we're going to find two bodies. There's two bodies out there, right? One's a worker. Who rescues the worker? Fireman, right? Anybody who's a kinker or whatever, we're going to set up a, a system, say, you guys go get them. We're going to hold till you get back. Anytime you see a, a, a a fireman down or a guy with an air pack on is yelling for it. Alright? So we kind of know what we're doing. We just got to be able to lay it out. So we get to lay it out now. You ready? Yes, sir. Do you want to sit there and go over what's burning? Oh, he's not over here. Alright, there's a couple of blocks. There's going to be a block here that you're going to have to do. There'll be a LPG right here burning straight up. You allowed to have a little bit of fire up here in the top. You might have to sit there and lug some foam up here. When you get over to here, there's going to be a block that's got to be made here. There'll be a propane fire here, and there'll be another liquid fire right here that's going to be sitting there dripping down. Uh, so you got the block here and here and there. There's two isolations on each one of those because it's a loop. So you got to shut two valves on either side of these. Right here's a vessel. Since this is burning, what are we going to lay down right there to sit there and cool that off? My ground monitor, right? We're going to put a ground monitor right in here on the edge of this and we're going to shoot it in here and capture that and keep this tank cool. So that's, that's where the ground monitor is going to go on this job. That way we can sit there and keep that cool while the guys go up. When we go up here and you want to shut this down as soon as the guys start flowing foam, we're going to use the hand lines to cool after that particular point in time. When you guys start walking forward, I'm using that hand line to cool the structure. Alright, you guys got any questions on that? Foam, uh, one is going to be water, two is going to be foam, three is going to be water. We're all going to go this way with the hand lines, the two and a half is going to go on this side. Monitor. Monitor, yeah. Okay, right. have at it.